So in this video, we are going to talk about the time complexity for O n log n that is also called linear logarithmic time. It means the linear logarithmic time means the runtime increases with the input size and the log of the input size. The one of the example with the you can see merge sort O n log n. So this is the combination you can say O n plus log n and then we combine them together and um, then we will get O of n log n and then we will see the time complexity graph also. But one of the example is the merge sort. So in this video, I'm going to talk about but what do you mean by merge sort? How exactly it is giving you the on O n log n? So always remember, whenever we have to talk about the merge sort, we have to talk about the divide and conquer this particular array. And then we have to sort this particular array with the help of merge sort with the divide and conquer. It means first divide this particular array and then keep adding it. Conquer means keep merging it. That's why this is called a merge sort. So we are going to talk about a merge sort mechanism. Must say that is one of the best a sorting algorithm which will give you O of n log n, right? So I can say this is a combination of O of n plus O of log n also. You can say that O of n is coming because of the linear. We will talk about because of the linear uh, equation we are getting it on O of log n we are getting because of the logarithmic equation we are getting it because we have to keep uh, dividing the array. So that's what we have to, these kind of algorithms are called divide and conquer. So I'll try, this is merge the array once again. Divide means keep divided this particular array that you can see in my screen, keep divided by two. So that will give you O of log N. So that's why this will give you, the divide part will give you log N and the merge means keep doing the, with the ON, uh, with the ON linear uh, equation and then keep merging the array into one part. So this is a formula that you have to remember that these kind of things that we have to solve with the divide and conquer problem. So this is called merge sort. We will not write the code, but we will see how exactly it works. So these are the eight elements are there and these are totally unsorted array. And then I'm giving some indexing, let's say index number one, then two, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements are there. You can start index from zero also. So what we have to do, we have to divide this particular array into two parts. Okay, so from here we have to divide this. So let's see, this is the first part and this is the second part. And the first part that we will get the first half, that is a seven, then five, then two, and then one. So I'll just write it like this. And then the next part is nine, six, three, and four here. Okay, so perfect. So first we will keep dividing and then we will keep conquer. So what we will do first, let's divide until what, until we get the only one single element in the array. So it will be a recursive method that we have to write. So what we have to do first divide into two parts and then again, divide that part and that part into two parts. So once again, I'm going to divide into two parts, this also into two parts. So I'll say, okay, fine. I'm just going to divide with seven and five. And this is two and one over here like this, two and one. And then this is again nine and six. So I'll write it like this. And this is three and four over here like that. Okay, once again, divide each and every part into two. So once again, <clears throat> this will be divided. So this will become only seven and this is five. This will become two and this is a one. This will be divided into two parts. So this is nine and then this is six. And then once again, this is a three and then four over here. So we have to keep dividing until you get only one single element in the array. Now you can see that we have reached at the, the last iteration that is each and every array is having only one element. You can see seven, then five, two and one. So we have to keep dividing into multiple parts. Tomorrow, let's see right now we have eight elements are there. So it will be eight by two. That's what it's dividing like, okay, four elements here and four elements here. Let's see tomorrow if we have nine and nine elements then in that case it will be five elements here and four elements here like that also we can do that so no need to worry that if you have uh odd numbers or even number of elements that's okay then it will just let's see in case of 11 then it will be uh, six elements here and uh, five elements in the left hand side so and then then after that just keep dividing into okay uh two parts and then once we have divided and we have to divide it till you have got the final element that is the single element that you have captured. So now this is the divide, division part is done. Okay, so till here that we have divided. 
Now, what is the second thing? The second part is the conquer. Conquer means the merge. Now we have to start doing the merging part. So that's what I'm saying. This is a merge part, or you can say the conquer part also. Okay, so I'll do one thing. I'll just write all these elements that we have already captured, right? Seven, five, two, one, something. Now what we have to do, we have to keep conquering. But one thing you have to remember that when we have to add or merge, you have to add it with the sorted mechanism. So what we have to do, we have to start keep creating the pair. So seven and five will be merged. So which one is, so when, what we have to merge? So merge means merge, but before merging, we have to sort it. So I'll write sort and merge. So here then sorting and then merging. Remember this thing. So between seven and five, which one is a smaller? Five is a smaller. I'm going to merge these two things. So I'll say, okay, fine. Then five will be added over here and seven will be added here. Same thing between two and one. One is the smaller one. So one will be added here and two will be added here. Then between the same thing with nine and six, I'll say six here and then nine here. And between three and four, you don't need to sort because it's already sorted. Then in that case, it is a three and this is a four here. Fine. Then again, we have to keep merging it. So now I'm going to merge these two things. So what we will do here, when we merge that, right, you will get four elements. Right. So what we have to, let's see, this is the left-hand side array. And this is the right hand side array, right? And let's see, this is represented by I index and this is represented by, let's see, J index. So what we have to do with I, we have to compare with J. So let's see, this is I zero, will be compared with J zero. And then we will check which one is the smaller one. The one is the smaller one, right? J zero is the smaller one. So one will be given over here first, and then we will remove this element from here. And then we will increase the index of J by one and J will moving to the next part okay then again i0 will be will be compared with the j2 or j1 over here you can say that with this so 5 and 2 which one is the smaller one the 2 is the smaller one the 2 will be given over here and then j will be moved to the next part now in the next part we don't have anything so we add a, a bigger number a larger number over here so for example let's see i'm going to add one infinity over here okay then once again and then once the two is shifted over here, right? Then we will remove this two from here and then we will add infinity. Then once again, I'm comparing with five with infinity, which one is a smaller? Obviously five is a smaller one. So I'll write five here. So I'll add five here and then remove five from here. Then I'll increase the index of I to the next element. Then once again, the seven will be compared with the infinite. So why are we adding the infinite? Because so that we can keep comparing the data, right? Which one is a smaller one and which one is a larger one so seven is again compared with the infinity which one is a smaller one the seven is a smaller one then seven will be added over here same thing we will do it over here as well so let's see once again six nine three four when we merge them together we will get four elements so i'm writing okay this is once again i and this is j this is i zero and j zero so i zero will be compared with what six will be compared with three so which one is the smaller one the smaller one will be picked first and then I'm saying, okay, fine. Three will be taken first, remove this array from here and increase the value of J by one. So J will be moving to the next element. Then once again, six and four, which one is the smaller one? Four is a smaller one. Four will be removed here. And then J will be moving to the next element. In the next element, we don't have anything. Then I'm going to add one infinity, a larger number over here. Then once again, six will be compared with infinity, obviously six. Then in fact, no need to compare nine with infinity. We know that now, whatever you're comparing with the infinity number, that specific number will be the smaller one. So I'll just keep adding six and nine over here without any problem. So, okay, this is also added over here. And then after that, these two elements are left. I mean, these two arrays are left. Then again, I'm going to merge them together. So I'm going to add conquer once again. Once again, this is I, and let's see, this is J. So four and four. So I know that, okay, I'm going to get eight elements over here. So I'll say, okay, one, then two, three, four, five, six, and let's see eight elements, I'll be getting it here. But once again, this is what I zero, and this is also J zero. So first I zero will be compared with the J zero one by one like this. So I'll say, okay, I zero one is smaller than three. Yes. So one will be added over here and I'll just remove one from here and edit. okay. And the, this is I, and then I'll keep shifting I to the next element. I is pointing to the next element now. Then once again, two is compared with three, which one is the smaller? Two is the smaller. So two will be removed from here and added over here. Then I will be increased over here. Then once again, the five and then compare with three, which one is the smaller? Three, three will be added here, remove three from here and then shift uh, J to the next element. 
Then once again, five will be compared with four. Four is the smaller one. Four will be added over here. Then in that case, remove four from here and move the index of J to the next element. Then once again, five and six will be compared. So which one is the smaller one? This time I is the smaller one. It means five add over here, remove this five from here and then move I to the next element. Okay, now I is pointing to seven and J is still pointing to six. Once again, seven and six will be compared. Which one will be coming first? Six will be coming first because six is a smaller one. Remove this from here and then, so keep removing and then keep adding it over here. Remove it and then add it here. So we have added here six over here and then shift J to the next element that is nine. Then seven and nine will be compared first. So seven will be added here and then the J will be towards to the next element. We don't have any anything. And then in that case, I'll add some larger number, let's see infinity here. Remove seven from here and add it over here. That is what we have added. Now we know that, okay, there is no point of comparing infinity and nine. We know that between infinity and then nine, nine is always a smaller number. And then we will add nine over here and that's it. Okay, and then we will remove nine from here. So what exactly we are getting, if you see this array, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, that is what we have written over here that seven, five, this one array, this is the unsorted array. And now finally, after divide and conquer, what we have achieved, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. It means we have achieved complete sorted array over here. So this is what a sorted array, right? And what we have seen actually, we have seen conquer, but before that we have seen the division. So keep dividing and then merging over here. So that's what these kind of mechanism, these kind of algorithms are called divide and conquer. Okay, so that's what the divide, we have to keep dividing into two parts. It means first time, let's see N elements are there. We have to keep dividing into two parts, then N by four parts, then N by eight parts. So that's what, this is what we have already seen in the, just like in the binary search also, what we do, divide into two parts. So this is giving you log of N time complexity. But here, the, when you keep merging it, this is just giving you what? Merging to array, that is giving you O of N linear equation. So that's why when you combine them together, log n over here like this. So that's what the time complexity will be this one. So if you see the time complexity graph, so O on O n log n somewhere, it will come in over here. I see this, this one. Okay. This is not better than O of n and O of log n. This is slightly expensive as compared to n and log n. That's why you see here. And this one also here, O n log n is coming towards left hand side of O of n. So, but it's still this is better than O n square and O n cube. And this example is what we have solved with the merge sort. In fact, merge sort in all the types, either it is the worst case scenario and the best case scenario in the average case also, it will always give you O of n log n. And this is one of the most performance wise, one of the best sorting algorithm that is a merge sort which will give you o of n log n okay so merge sort is the one of the best sorting algorithm that is what we have seen the simple thing here in an upcoming video i'll tell you the complete code also we will write the pseudo code and then we'll try to see that how exactly it is working but this today i just want to show you how exactly it is giving you the n log n time complexity i hope this is clear